I'll probably blow up your yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so we're gonna start reading Romans chapter five, six, seven, eight, and take as far as we need to to keep the thought. Continue the context. So, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein ye stand, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience, experience, and experience, hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which he given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God who commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now, excuse me, by whom we have now received the atonement. Where the atonement was like equal unto the spirit in the earlier passage. It's an interesting point. Verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for all that have sinned, for all for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there was no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one, that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For justification is another interesting word. Are we talking about salvation at justification? Interesting. Okay, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered, that the offense made abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. What shall, I, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall, also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. 
knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to, unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. I got to say this. I got to say this. Yeah. The Father is in Christ and Christ in us. Could it possibly be the thought that you're born of Christ and then they think that you must be born of the Father to have the Father and the Son? That meaning of the Spirit holy. Uh, I see what you're saying. That's... Could it be that in their minds? Because this blows it away. But I'll verse is that, up. Is that yeah. part of the misunderstanding, the preconceived idea? Remember, I touched, I touched on it earlier today, and I can see where they would look at this and say, "For in verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if ye be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Th that could be in a preconceived idea of saying, well, you should receive the Holy Ghost. Y you should speak with tongues. You know, I don't see where that in their preconceived idea would take away from that. But it does get taken away in the next passage. Because if oh. we receive Christ, we know we're receiving the Father at the same time. Because now we're talking about being made alive through Christ Jesus. And, and we put on Christ in our baptism. So how can I not be alive? Because we're going to talk about life eternal being through the Spirit. <laughs> How can I put on Jesus and not be alive? Because I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I put him on. And I think it goes to um, the under, you have to understand what Jesus was saying in those, those three or four chapters in John. About True. he is one with the Father and the Father with him. And, yes. And that... The disciples are one, even as he is one with the Father. And we he makes our abode with us. Right. Through Christ. So with that understanding, when you read, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death not hath no more dominion over him, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ or Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the in. That's the abode. That, that has to be it. It's got to be it. And, and he just got talking about we put on Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, am I confusing also Galatians 3? For many of you who have been baptized in Christ to put on Christ. Does he say put on Christ? Um, let's no. We're buried okay, with know him. Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Where, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should be, also should walk in newness of life. Um... For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Uh, okay, so if we're going to plant in the likeness of his death, we're also going to be in the likeness of his resurrection. That's planted together. That's baptism. Mm-hmm. So, so what we are... 
in Galatians? Yeah, 326, 27, maybe. About putting on Christ? Yeah. Um, so we're going to, we from Romans reading, we know we're going to be planted together in the likeness of his death, and we're also going to be in the likeness of his resurrection. That's the point established here in Romans 6. Now, that point does not get lost. What we were reading in 8 is still a continuation of this thought. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, I was on verse, I think, 12. Sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not? that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom... Oh, Siri, stupid. Um, hopefully it won't do that again. 16. Okay, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked. That okay, you... so what are we obeying if we speak in tongues? Is tongues righteousness? Is receiving the Spirit of God righteousness? I think righteousness comes through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because he's the justifier. We can't be righteous of our own. Right. Um, what are we obeying? When we're baptized, we're obeying. We know that. We're and obeying. That's the answer of a good conscience towards God. Yeah. But me seeking out the gift of the Holy Ghost, what obedience is there in that? Where's the commandment that says I must receive that Holy Spirit? Must be, I guess, only John 3. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh no, no, that's okay. That I mean, that's that's a that's a valid point. Is and that goes to when is the receipt of the spirit? Yep. Okay. So let's see. Seventeen. Seventeen. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. What form of doctrine? What did you obey from the heart? The gospel, the baptism, repentance in Jesus. Yes, exactly. But then, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so, now yield your yield your members servants to uh, servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. Fruit. Death, I think fruit is the key or part of the key. You have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Jesus yeah, Christ. Again, through. Yes. Okay, I guess I'm up. Uh, know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Now, there's our assumption, too, that people brought up in the law would understand this from that perspective. Mm -hmm. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. He keeps the same thought of death and righteousness and resurrection. 
For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring, fruit, bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve the newness of the spirit of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. That's the new covenant, newness of the spirit. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law, for I had not known lust except the law said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taken occasion by the commandment, brought in me all manner of concupiscence which without the law of with for without the law sin was dead for i was alive without the law once but when the commandment came sin revived and i died and the commandment which was ordained to life i found to be death for sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Was then that which was good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it may appear sin, worketh death in me by that which is good. That sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not, for what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. <laughs> that makes sense. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that which I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God, after the inward man. Ooh, interesting. Covenant prophecy of the inward man. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity of the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Hmm. Uh, let's see, chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Uh -huh. uh, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And we got to, we got to, this begs a question in verse one. In Christ Jesus, we put on Christ ourselves. Mm -hmm. But how do we get in Christ Jesus? Just saying. Go ahead, start with one again. Let's see. <clears throat> 
There is, <clears throat> there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I got it. That's the place Jesus went to prepare, that where I am, there ye may be also. We are in the body of Christ. When we're born in that operation of God, and we put on Jesus Christ, we are where he is, that we can behold the glory, and we walk in his kingdom. And that's through the promise of the law, of, of the covenant. I mean, through that promise of the covenant of the spirit. Now we are we are in Christ Jesus, and we are now in the spirit. But after the spirit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Verse two. Go ahead. Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in likeness, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the, after the flesh, but after the spirit. Wow. Yeah. It's really putting everything that, in perspective here. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Because if you walk after the flesh, the, the sin of the law, the description of sin, slays you. But if you walk in the righteousness of the law and the intent, Christ fulfilled, it's fulfilled in us. We walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Walking in newness of life. Exactly. Not in the oldness of the letter. Uh, let's see verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. That's the ways of the flesh under the law. So, let me read that again. So because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. It has to sin. The sin of the, fl the flesh will sin because of the law. It points out sin. The flesh can't do it. Yep. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's it. Keep going. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm digesting I'm now, just so I don't, I won't lose it. Verse nine. Um. Okay. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of. And if Christ be in you. The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. His righteousness. His righteousness, right. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Yeah. There's that, no question you got to have the spirit of God in your body to be saved. Yes. <laughs> um, but what seems apparent in in these past few verses and and we can explore this more as we get we get through this um, is that if you're not receiving his spirit in baptism, how can you walk after the spirit? How can you know him in the likeness of his resurrection? Because right. that's where the spirit quickens your body. How can you bear fruit of the spirit if you don't have his spirit in you? Okay, I'll continue. Um, where was I? Thir uh, Twelve. Twelve. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live after the flesh. But if you live after the flesh, 
ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many are as, as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit Just as we received Christ the Son, the Father was in the Son, we received the Son, so now we're crying, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glory. Let me read that again. <laughs> if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Ooh. Even we ourselves groan with ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. The first fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. Is that a reference to Christ being the first fruit? Of the resurrection could be because that's what we're talking about the, the redemption of our body mm -hmm. that fine like that final definition talked about the coming of christ let me read that again and not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the spirit spirit of god living in us even we ourselves grown within ourselves waiting for the adoption to it god why aren't you here yet well, that, that he was the first of the resurrection, right? Of of the this age of the resurrection, he resurrected other people. But the point is, he was the first fruits of the the resurrection as being the Christ. He had to go away to prepare the place, and he did prepare the place. For bear, for planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be raised in the likeness of his resurrection. That is what our hope is. Right. He was the first resurrection. Okay. Uh, 24. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is not, hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Um, let's see. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what the mind what and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? Or excuse me, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? 
It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is God that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who will also maketh intercession for us. Yeah, who is he that condemneth? Judgment was committed to the Son. It is Christ that died. Mm -hmm. Yea, rather, is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. God justifies. But condemnation, he, he that believeth not is condemned already. Right? Because he right. believeth not. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who maketh intercession for us. So who shall separate us from the love of God? Excuse me, from the love of Christ? Again, we receive Christ in our baptism. Right? Mm -hmm. That that first fruit, we have we know him in likeness of his erection. We're we're we have him in us. Nothing can separate that from us. No other thing, mind you. We we can separate it from ourselves, but nothing outside of us could separate that. Right. I'm sorry. Thirty five. Go ahead. No, that's right. Um, yeah. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution? or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I guess now he's going into the order of. Yeah, it looks seed. like nine is going into something, another topic. Yeah. So, okay. We started in five and we took it through. <clears throat> what was uh, it nine? Yeah. So far, four chapters. Okay. We took it through eight. Five, six, seven, eight. It really seems clear that we received the righteous judgment when we received Christ. He loved us. That's why he came and died for us. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? And in that love, we have, we're not condemned. We are brought into life, eternal. Mm-hmm. And by putting on Jesus, excuse me, by applying, knowing him in the likeness of his, I'm trying to just read from the, the text that we read. So knowing him in the likeness of his death by baptism, we shall also know him in the likeness of his resurrection. That continues the whole baptism thought. Mm-hmm. That does. I understand punctuation has no authority, but still, that is the same context thought. Resurrection, death, death, resurrection. They're in script. They're tied together in mm -hmm. Christ. That's the whole story of chapter five. For by one man's righteousness, many are made righteous. So when we put on that one man's righteousness, we become righteous, but only through the Spirit. Because unless we have that spirit, that resurrected Christ dwelling within us, to me that proves, just in that chapter as a whole, chapter 6, that I received that spirit of Christ in me when I put him on, in my, when I know him in the likeness of his resurrection. Because I can't know him in the likeness of his re resurrection unless I have the spirit, because it clarifies that later. Yeah, because in um, um, 16, but you know not to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience, obedience unto righteousness. Right. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yeah. Uh, and then he goes on to say, you know, but... God be thanked that you were the servants. You you were the servants of sin. Uh, ye have 
ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, the you know, answer of a good conscience. Um, the doctrine. Um, that form of doctrine which was delivered to you, the doctrine of the gospel of Christ, you know, the the yeah. the, the doctrine of, of repentance and remission of sins. Jesus had all power in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach. The doctrine. That's the good news of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, he said, being then, so being that how how being then made free from sin, how? Because you had had that you obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, and ye became the servants of righteousness. How were they made free from um, sin? Um, how were they? How did they become the servants of righteousness? Their obedience, yes, to baptism. Their obedience to the gospel that was delivered unto them, to the Repent doctrine. And baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, and you know, chapter eight, beginning where it says, "There, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit." You can't walk after the Spirit if you don't have Christ. If you're not in Christ. And you can't have the spirit unless you know him in the likeness of his resurrection. Right. So. Now. Now what does tongues have to do with resurrection? Right. So the argument that I could see coming. <laughs> is that well that's that's the spirit. You know that that you're in Christ Jesus when you speak in tongues. Okay yes that is true. However. So if somebody if somebody through answering a good conscience, answering answering that good conscience of the heart, obeys the gospel, they get baptized, they repent, they get baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of their sins. So long their line of thinking, if right after that baptism, I mean immediately after that baptism, they didn't immediately speak in tongues. That they don't have, they don't have the gift. They don't have that the spirit of God dwelling in them until they speak in tongues. Then they're not yet saved. Then they're not saved yet, which is their argument. But then, how can they? How can they even? How can they even follow after the spirit? How can they walk in the spirit if they don't have the spirit with them at that point? To be spiritually minded and led, right? By the spirit. Because it's not possible. It's, we proved that in, in Romans 7. Mm -hmm. And you, because where did it say? Um, where did it talk about putting? It didn't say putting on. You said that was in Galatians. Yeah, yeah. Um, We're talking about being baptized into. Right. His death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Because there was something in here that said, maybe it was in six, that we're in Christ Jesus. Three. Know you not so many of us as were baptized oh. into Jesus Christ? We're baptized into his death. So we're baptized into Jesus Christ. That's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One. That's how we're... Okay. Okay. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, into, we became one with Jesus. Yes. Just as, as as he was telling the disciples at the end of John. Yes, exactly. That's how we become one with Jesus and yep. one with the Father, is through yep. baptizing, baptism. Because that's it. That's the Spirit. It, that's applying everything. The, the, the removal of sin, the righteousness, everything. Get, we're complete in Christ, as it says in Ephesians. And Colossians, we are complete in him. Colossians, Colossians where? Colossians, Colossians 2. Colossians 2. Oops. 
Let me see where we're going here. Starting in at verse 8. And it takes it through 15. 8 through 15. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. You said through which one? Through? Through 18, I think I said. 18. Um, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein ye are also, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. So wherein what? Baptism. Mm -hmm. You are also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Because remember, he talked about that we would know him in the likeness of his death. Now, I wanted to note that in whom also you are circumcised. We talk about the adoption. Talk about the receiving the people of God. The circumcision is not one made by hands, but it's circumcision of the heart. That's referencing the Old Testament. Yes. People becoming, if people wanted to become part of Israel, they had to be circumcised by hands. But now we're talking about a circumcision of Christ. Circumcision of the heart. Yes. The removing of sin. To right. be the people of God. They shall be my people and I will be their God. Right. That's the adoption. That's the seed of many seeds. So we're buried with him by, we're buried with him in baptism. Wherein also you are risen with him, wherein, the same, baptism, you're also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Again, it's not our works, it's the operation of God that does this circumcising of of sin and, and remission and an application of the resurrecting power of Jesus who has raised him from the dead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Paul is saying exactly the same thing here as he said to the Romans. Very much so. He's just, he's, he's wording it differently for the, uh, the people. The Colossians were in what? Corinth? No, that's Corinthians. Well, Colossi, Colossi, but, but the, the thing is, one was more Gentile audience, Colossi, versus I speak to them that know the law, he said in, Ro in Rome. That's right. He's, he's speaking to his audience, but he's yes. saying the same thing. Um, okay, 13. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Because they were considered the uncircumcision by those that were called the circumcision. Mm -hmm. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. It sounds the ordinances like the that were against us was the law. Yeah. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, openly, uh, triumphing, triumphing, yeah, <laughs> over them in it. <laughs> uh, let let no man judge, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day, or or of the new moon or of the or of, of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Yeah, don't let that circumcision try to impose on you all the things of the law of Moses. The body is of Christ. I like that. Yep. Let no man beguile you of your reward in any voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding and not holding the head which from all the body by body which wit okay let me do this again and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands 
having nourishment ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Keep going. Um, wherefore, if ye be dead uh, with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances, the law, right? Yep. Um, so touch. here he's saying, if ye be dead with Christ, and chapter 3, verse 1 says, if ye then be risen with Christ. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, touch not, taste not, handle not, which all, which all are to perish with the using. That's interesting. <clears throat> After the commandments and doctrines, doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in, in will worship and humility, excuse me, and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Yep. That's all the parts of the, you said, don't let them judge you in new moons, feasts, Sabbaths. That's what he's describing here. Will and worship. Yeah, it looks like the thought's continuing. If yep. you can be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For if for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Nice. Nice. So it's pretty clear we're completing Christ. Right. And we put him on. Now, we haven't gone to Galatians yet. Mm -hmm. I'll go to Galatians chapter 3, and I'll just read that part because I keep on saying putting on, and I just want to show the scriptures on it. Yeah. So that's for recording. Galatians 3. Let's go to verse uh, 23 and read it to the end. Would you do that? Because I'm not sure when we'll. Um, <clears throat> verse 23, Galatians 3. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are also, for ye, ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, there's that in, yeah. into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if be, if, if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Yay, the promise. Hello. Hey there. Um, so so that's, that's saying the same thing as he said in Romans. And in Colossians. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That's the spirit. Well, I, I, it's got to be. I because, can't see that any other way. Because if speaking in tongues is putting on the spirit of Christ, there's, there's absolutely, it's, that would mean that if it was that important to speak in tongues, and if it meant that that was receiving of the spirit of God, then everyone who gets baptized should automatically be speaking in tongues. Yeah, because they're receiving the Spirit. But that's not, that's not, as we've said, that is not the only evidence. That's the only way there can't be a contradiction, is that right. it's not the only evidence. But to maintain and to try to justify that thought further, they're not saying you got to, speaking in tongues equals Holy Ghost. They're saying speaking in tongues is evidence of the Holy Ghost. Right. They're not putting that weight. Well, and then what um, 
Andrew was saying, um, he was specifically saying that you didn't receive the Holy Ghost until you spoke in tongues. Yeah, okay. So we need to help him ferret out as we did. If we said, if we just said to him, you know what, we, we had come also from a UPC background. Mm -hmm. So we had to strip ourselves of all pre-existing understandings and start with the covenant and, and take it from the Old Testament, the schoolmaster, to take us under Christ. And then when Christ came, he fulfilled all that schoolmaster. And what was said? What were the prophecies? What were all this? Try not as hard, as difficult as it is to not pre-assume anything. How many times did Matt, you and I have to go through and correct ourselves and stop mm -hmm. ourselves and say, well, wait a minute, it didn't say that. It said said it this way. We we twisted it in our in our tradition. He's gonna have to go through that same exercise. He's gonna have to be willing to go through that same exercise to to allow the scripture to back up the scripture, to allow the scripture to form the the opinion. Mm -hmm. That's hard. Oh my goodness, that's hard. Yep. And I don't know a lot of people can do it. I don't know if people are willing. I think he's willing, based on what you're telling me, to be proven wrong or corrected because it doesn't matter my organization. What matters is my relationship to Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what matters. I mean, he, he, I'm, and now I'm thinking of, I, I wasn't around when, when the decision was made in, in our ministry by Pastor Davis and those at the time yeah. of the switch from speaking in tongues as part of salvation to it not being part of salvation. Um, now, I, I don't, I can imagine based on what we've gone through over the, many weeks and, and especially today um, that uh, that it started with a question it started with somebody just reading through like we've done reading through Romans and reading through Galatians and Colossians and coming to the understanding that wait a minute there, there's, there, there's something else going on here yeah and realizing that that the receipt of the Holy Ghost happens at baptism, it, yes. there's not a gap in between. There can't be. And it because all goes back to that. Yeah. Otherwise, as we've discovered, how could somebody walk in faith? How could somebody walk in the Spirit? And how can they have freedom from sin? The, because yeah, if 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 it means speaking in tongues is a receipt of the Holy Ghost. And that means from baptism to that receipt, they're walking in sin. But that can't be because they've had their sins remitted. Right. Exactly. And, and I, I, I can imagine the conversation that ensued um, and, and, and Pastor Davis seeing it and realizing, or maybe he started the conversation. I don't know. Well, I don't know where it I started. I wasn't there when that conversation happened. But I have been spoken to, I have had been shared with by people that were there when that conversation happened. One person told me, I just got done having a Bible study and how you had to speak in tongues to be saved. And pastor called a lecture on the floor and he, <laughs> and he came out and said it. So uh, that, that's one person. Another person told me that he still maintained that belief he had to speak in tongues to be saved, even though Pastor Davis came out with whatever he came out with. I don't know how he presented it. I don't know what scriptures he used. I don't know. I, my, my detail are very sketchy. Yeah. But I do know that somewhere along the line, he had to strip off UPC doctrine as a tradition of man. And the pride of your organization and your association and membership it's like loving the praises of men more than the loving the praise the praises of God. It becomes so strong in your pride and your ego and your camaraderie and your association that we're social creatures. You know, we feel that that need to be a part of. 
Mm -hmm. And like you said, abiding in the vine, we are the branches. No organization is in between that, Christ and us. And mm -hmm. for anyone to be willing to come through and have your faith re-tweaked, your, your doctrine realigned, you have to be willing to separate yourself from your organization. Very few people are willing to do that. I wonder if this is this is the pruning, <laughs> the digging about the you know what the reference is to getting getting a getting a a tree to grow more fruit. You have to prune it and cut it and do all these things to get it to grow more. Yeah, how about that? Um, Be aware of the leaven. Right, the leaven of the Pharisees. Well, now, granted. I, I don't know how I don't know. There's no way of knowing if 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 anybody went to the depth that we've gone with this. I can only imagine it had to have been. And and, and I, I yeah, because it wasn't until I mean, the realization and the firmness of this, I don't think really, really hit until we read through those four chapters. And we looked at the references in Galatians and Colossians. Yeah, I mean, it really solidified things. Um, and I was ready. To, I was, I was, ex I was ready. It's like, okay, God, if I'm wrong, if I'm not understanding this right, show me. And, exactly. Exactly. Because I'm totally willing to to do what it takes to be. <clears throat> if God, God pricked our hearts. I believe this with all my heart, not to be divisive. But to be right. Because we asked for that. Mm -hmm. And I think. He gave it to us. Yep. And I know we're not the only ones that believe this thing. But here's what I do also believe. I do believe that Satan is very good at his job. And for God forgive me for giving him any kind of credit. But he has through tradition slowly changed. And corrupted the gospel of Christ. And the Christendom. And turned into almost unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. That's probably why it's so hard for us to look through this and, and try to strip out all those doctrines of men. To get to the root of it. Whew. That's hard. Um, to push and past all that stuff. The only way we can do this is to read in full context. Yep. What, what was being said and starting from the Old Testament. Now, this is something that we haven't done a lot of in our ministry, but teach and preach the Old Testament in its proper perspective. It was there to bring us unto Christ. Mm -hmm. But what made Apollos so powerful that Paul basically gave him license to go wherever he wanted, had people to work with him uh, because he mightily convinced the Jews publicly. He had such a grip of the Old Testament, and he was able to articulate it. Hmm. Man, if we only had some letters from him. <laughs> right? But Paul, Saul, was a man brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. Obviously, there was a man that he was very, very taught in the, in the letter. Mm-hmm. So I think when he when he spoke for the Jewish, the circumcision perspective, he was very detailed in how he said it and what he quoted. When he spoke to the Gentiles, he was very specific in how he addressed them. And it was a difference. It was a whole different perspective of what Christ was. The schoolmaster was to bring people unto Christ. Now Christ came. Well, things are different now. Well, if you're under the tradition of the elders, that never changed. The law was from there until generation till generation. It was never to change. That's the way they taught it. But Moses from the start said, there's going to be a prophet after me, like unto me, him you're supposed to hear. <laughs> so it was right there from Moses' time on. That, that's almost word for word what John said. Yeah, there one there is one that cometh 
comes after, after me, me. His shoe latchets I cannot. And the law and the prophets were until John. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's why some of the beginning portions of the New Testament really are Old Testament. Because <laughs> it wasn't fulfilled yet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay. The only other thing um, 